live in the D green room. We were talking about the 70s earlier, and uh, like fondue would be like a 70s thing, deviled eggs, and charcuterie. Would you think of charcuterie as being old school? I don't think so. I feel like it's a new school thing. Look at how beautiful this is. Take a look. Meats so and cheeses, people. Meats and cheeses. And we had some of that. And uh, the person, the guest that we had on, uh, says that she is such an expert. She can assemble one of these boards in minutes. I love it. It's called Charming Graze, like G-R-A-Z-E. And you had a chance to chit-chat with them. I grazed. Very important. Hey, charcuterie boards are all the rage these days. They are great for parties and, of course, enjoying them at restaurants. But with the pandemic, things changed a little bit and people kind of started to shy away from the, the shared applications, shall we say. Well, a local company has its own individual twist on creating the same grazing experience, if you will. We are joined by Courtney Beener, the owner and founder of Charming Graze Charcuterie. So, first of all, for the folks at home, what is charcuterie? Well, charcuterie is basically just a term that's been around since the 1500s and it started in France. And it's basically just cured meat, um, where the term actually came from. So that's what it means. Charcuterie is like a pork meat, just a meat basically, um, which is just a, as people call it, a, a fancy cheese board. All right, so most people have seen the expansive boards loaded with all kinds of good eats. Uh, so what would you recommend for people who aren't comfortable with, you remember the famous Seinfeld episode where Costanza double dips and, yes. and gets called out. You don't <laughs> double dip. So we're even beyond that now to where like people are like, eh, no, no, what do you recommend? Um, me personally, I think um, you have to have a hard, a soft, and a semi-soft cheese. Um, a lot of people might not eat pork, so maybe you don't want your charcuterie to be pork. We do vegan options. Um, we do turkey options. Um, like we have here, um, just a little display board. This board here is all turkey. Um, we have some of our customers that are actually my um, nut friendly. So we do nut friendly things. That's the turkey that we're looking at right now. Um, yes, this is. And what kind of cheese is that? It has sort of a purpley cast um, on the outside. <laughs> yes, this is a Balaventino. This here is um, a soaked um, in a red wine here. This is a Manchego cheese here. Um, of course, your fruits, you always want to have like some dried nuts, any, um, any dried fruits, any of the in-season fruits, which are like your brighter things here. We have your greens. Okay, so this right now, Dick is getting a shot of our, oh, we went away <laughs> from it. I was going to hold it up. Okay. Uh, this is an S yes. shaped charcuterie right there mm -hmm. for Michigan State, Tati. <laughs> not, nothing for Michigan, nothing for Western or Eastern or Central. This is all state right here. <laughs> all, all state. Go green. Yes. Okay, so, and then here up front, I mean, the, the level of detail that you put into this because it says live in the D. Yeah. Actually, on this board, uh, let me tilt it. I know this, this stuff, I'm risking some stuff falling off, but you can see it says live in the D. Uh, how long does it take to, to create that? Um, it, it's really, really fast. I've only been doing it for seven months and it kind of took off um, so quick. Um, so I can put this board together probably in about less than like 25 minutes. Well, you can do that. Yeah. But if, if I were to like go to your website or come to your store mm -hmm. or call your phone number or go to your social media, how much lead time do I need to give you to put it together in 25 At least 48 minutes? hours, depending okay. on the size of the order. Um, but 48 hours is um, usually our turnaround time. And we are looking at a scrum dilly umptious <laughs> uh, series of photographs of the different displays. Yeah. Uh, uh, how can somebody build a, a board like this on a budget? Um, so if you guys follow me on my social media, um, Charming Grace, um, that's on Facebook and Instagram. I do um, some walkthroughs where I go to local grocery stores like Trader Joe's and we do things like on a budget where we can help build a board on, 30, on, like on a $30 board. Really? Yes. And a lot of finds are like at your Audis. You can find a lot of good cheeses for cheaper at Audis. Um, so that's some of the... All right. Well, now, how long does it take to make a uh, salami rose? A um, couple minutes. I actually have um, some things here if you want to try. It's really fast. It's okay. really simple. Mm. Um, and I actually brought us, you want to grab a wine glass there? We were actually out of time, but oh. I will definitely do it during the break. Okay, perfect. Definitely. Where can people learn more about your business? Um, follow me on social media, Facebook, as well as Instagram, um, name Charming Grays all together. Um, you can email me at www. 
uh, order charminggraze.com. And when you say charming graze with Gra a Z, right? Correct. G R A Z E. Like grazing. Correct. Charming graze. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure. Now you guys can eat all of this stuff. Oh, I plan to. <laughs> Don't you worry. You know, when I was a kid, I had a kite. Did you? That I loved. Who does? What kid doesn't love a kite when you were that age where you finally get it airborne and, and a good wind? Yeah, you know, you really, it's like an accomplishment that you need the nature to cooperate you with you in order to have, right? You right. know what I mean? So you can get out there and spend a lot of time playing. Kites was fun. All right, and do that on Belle Isle. Listen to this. Don't be surprised if you see something flying over Belle Isle this weekend. No, it's not a UFO in the sky. They're actually kites. The fourth annual Detroit Kite Festival is this Sunday. And joining us now is Margot Dalal. She's the, uh, the director of the Kite Festival and Gary Menard, a kite enthusiast. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. How does one become the director of a kite festival, I wonder? Um, you think about what would be a cool community event and there wasn't really a citywide kite festival in Detroit and I had been to the one in Washington DC so I thought it'd be really fun to get something like that going. On and Bell you Isle. did? Yeah. Fourth annual? Yes. Yep. All through the pandemic? We took two years off for the pandemic but actually people came and flew kites in July um, on the cricket field with the, where the kite festival happened. So it kept going even without us. Well, you say the cricket field, now where is that? That's right next to the James Scott Fountain and in between there and the Belle Isle Casino. So out on Belle Isle? Yeah, right on Belle Isle. Okay, so we see uh, pictures here on the screen of flights, uh, kites flying in action. Uh, what it, what's the deal with the kites? Why, why be an enthusiast as opposed to like model railroads or remote control cars? Well, I've been in the kite flying now since 1983, the Windjammers, we travel around the world, mm -hmm. and we're honored to be part of the Detroit Kite Festival. Okay. Uh, we've been out there, like I said, for years, and uh, I fly kites because it's something to do. There you have it. I mean, uh, <laughs> some people like build model cities in their basements, some people fly kites. You have some kites to show off right now. What do we have? Different types. There's a box kite, and then there's something that looks like a light preserver. Tell us. <laughs> yeah, we have a few different kites here. This is a box kite I made at a workshop earlier this year. Now, this one's kind of funny. It's okay, a pair of underwear. Oh, I thought that it was a light preserver, oh, but I was looking at it upside down. Yes. Tati, uh, it's I'd a fighter kite. Uh, made from a friend of mine in England. This is a Rokaku. Now, what makes a Rokaku kite? Uh, it's that? a six sided kite. Okay. Rokaku is six sided in Chinese, I believe. Got it. All right. We also have two kites from a local Detroit based kite maker. We have this box kite, which you can buy at the kite festival. Yeah. Really right, cool, right? I bet you perfectly framed. Look at that. <laughs> it's like they've done TV before. <laughs> okay, so what, uh, there's one up front, too. Yes. Over here. What is that? That's a a oh. stunt kite. This okay, is a two-line kite. Yeah, I had that when I was a kid. Yep, and it maneuvers around. This is basically what the wind jammers fly. I got it. And uh, there'll be five of us out there this year. Okay, so obviously wind is a factor. Is it possible yes. to fly a kite when there's little wind? Or is it like... It is. is it, there's always wind way up there, so if you can get it up there... Yeah, so I actually think this is a great way to get kids to run because if you run and hold a kite, it will fly. So little kids, I think it's a great way to get them out and exercising. But for us adults that maybe don't like to run around as much in public, um, Gary was just telling me about a motorized kite. Oh, well, there's that too. I wish we had more time. Uh, so. Can anybody fly a kite out on Belle Isle, or is it just professionals? Yes, anybody can fly a kite. We'll have kites for sale. We'll have kites to borrow. Many people bring their own kite. Everyone can buy a kite or Excellent. fly a kite. Yep. All right, where can people get more information? Um, Detroit Kite Festival um, on Instagram. We also have a website. We're on Facebook, so you can find us anywhere. So when you leave here, are you going to go fly a kite? Always. Well, it's raining today. I would tell you so to go I have, kite, but you know, that would not be proper. <laughs> always check Channel 4 for my weather, and then I go out. Smart man. Those are the local forecasters. Thank you both for being here. Thanks so much. Thank Good you. to see you. All right. And then when you're done flying a kite, maybe you'll head over to Lake Orion to Canterbury Village, which has a ton of activities still to come in July and August of this summer. They're going to keep us really busy over there. In my suit of armor. Did, did you see? Did you see what I was in the, in the segment? I'm the guy on the left. No, you're not. <laughs> it was, and I was like, "Is this about to go down? Is this like 
middle meaning medieval beef happening right here. <laughs> I, and then once they really got to, you just got to watch this segment and then you'll understand what I'm talking about. All right, well, after the excitement of the 4th of July celebrations, the rest of the summer may appear a bit dull, but hold on. You can look forward to summer long fun all happening at one place in the D. Our sponsor, Canterbury Village in Lake Orion, has a lineup of events with something for everyone. And we want to welcome back the owner, Keith Aldridge. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. So we have a lot to, to get to. But first, yes. how would you describe Canterbury Village? Well, it's turning into one of Metro Detroit great family destinations for entertainment. Um, we feel we're, we're right in the top five with, you know, people like the uh, Henry Ford and the Detroit Zoo. Yep. Every weekend we have something great going on. It's a great campus, you know, beautiful trees, beautiful architecture, great setting. And uh, it's very relaxed and very fun to come out and have some fun. Very, very, very true. Now I'm going to get to your, I'm going to ask you about yeah. your outfit in a minute. But first, let's talk about the Michigan Medieval Fair Stroll. Yes, well, we have two back-to-back oh. -back weekends. And then over here, we have the Detroit. I'm sorry, let me, let's talk about the Cowboys oh, and Cowgirls oh, okay. first. Because we want to get to everything in the right order. Yes, Cowboys Thank and you. Cowgirls is uh, this weekend. It's a first-year event for us. We have great entertainment with, uh, you know, gunfights and things of that nature, all kinds of fun acting out stuff, mm -hmm. uh, carriage rides and things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. It's our first one and uh, the response has been great so far. And I'm sure people get all dressed up and get all into oh, it. 100 percent. Bring all your right. cowboy hats and cowboy boots. That's all right. Now, now let's get <laughs> to the Michigan Medieval Fair Stroll, what people can expect. Well, our, our lineup is second to none in the state of Michigan. Um, obviously, over, over our shoulder here, we have the um, Michigan Detroit or the Detroit Fight Club. Um, it's a really neat interactive type of thing. They actually fight for points. And it's just not a demonstration, but they're actually trying to win the competition. It's really, really cool. All um, right. Now, I, th I, th I thought I was going to see a literal fight break out. Is that <laughs> happening today? Yeah, I, I think so. All right. <laughs> so this is the fighting that, that, that happens. Yes, it's a point system. Okay. Um, no one's going to hit each yeah, other. <laughs> well, they are going to hit each other. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to win a competition. All so right. it's a real sport. And, so uh, sh show us. What does this look like? Let's get into it. Oh, wow. All right, don't hurt each other. I'm glad they have armor on. Yes. And okay. <laughs> so, the, so every hit, maybe a point. Yes. So okay. every every hit, every strike's a different okay. uh, point. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Every so that looked real. You know, it's an actual point <laughs> system. Uh, obviously, they do it all over the country. There's big national events oh. that take place. Um, you know that uh, you know there's professionals at this, yeah, and, the, and the Detroit Fight Club takes it very, very seriously, and they're, and they're great at it, and people love to watch it. Yeah, I, I, that was exciting right there. I was like, that's official. That's official. <laughs> yes. So now next, let's talk about a magical weekend. We're talking about the Harry Potter birthday celebration. Yep, Harry Potter. Obviously, our beautiful castles out there set a, a great backdrop for Harry Potter and the mystical type of uh, weekend for us. Um, <laughs> We've been doing the Harry Potter events for a few years now. They're extremely, extremely popular. This w event will sell out. And uh, kids of all ages love to come out and act like they're Harry Potter. Yeah, absolutely. So now that was all happening in July. Now let's look ahead to August and the Hippie Fest oh, yeah. in the village. What's that about? Well, uh, Hippie Fest, uh, we started in 2018 and it's turned into one of our uh, bigger events at Canterbury Village. Uh, it's just, you know, come on out. A lot of people, you know, dress like way better than I do. <laughs> um, you know, go back in time a little bit. Uh, I see people walking around in uh, bare feet and having fun and, uh, you know, doing their thing, listening to some chill music and, and some great vendors. It's a lot of fun. It's all about having a good time. And then let's talk about the fun Fury event, the Michigan Dog Fest. The Michigan Dog Fest, great entertainment. Um, we did it uh, a few years ago. Obviously, the pandemic is a you know, altered yeah. our schedule like a lot of places. Um, really neat entertainment. Come on out. Bring your furry friends with you. And uh, if you're a cat lover, too, bring your cats as well. Okay, why not? Hey, it's nice when you can get the furry yeah. friends out of the house and bring them with you. So, and finally, to wrap things up for August, there is the Michigan Made Festival. Tell me about that. Yep, Michigan Made is uh, turning into one of our bigger events and one of Metro Detroit's bigger events. Um, you know, it's great to come out and, and support, uh, you know, local small businesses that sell their arts and crafts. Obviously, you don't want to take anything away from uh, the dot coms, Walmart sure. or, or uh, Amazon. You know, they serve a great purpose in our community or in our society. But it's great to come out and support those local artists. 
um, and those local shop owners, and that's what we do at Canterbury. We have all local people on site, obviously. You know, Yates is so well known on our campus, so yeah. come on out, support the, our, our local economy, and help some uh, local uh, shop owners. That's right, local business. I'm all about shopping local, so I love that. That's probably my favorite one out of them all of them. But... It, it is one of our best. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is going to be so much fun happening this summer. Thank you. We've had a busy schedule already this year, and it's only going to get busier. I love it, and better. <laughs> and better. And better. All right, to check out uh, all the fun events happening this summer at Canterbury Village in Lake Orion, and to make your plans to visit, check out their website, CanterburyVillageEvents.com. Again, that's CanterburyVillageEvents.com. All right, so now that we've got you set up, whether you want to fly a kite, head over to Lake Orion to Canterbury Village, or maybe get some beautiful party, party favors for your next gathering this summer, we got you covered on Live Medi today. Very good and very fresh. Very beautiful. Just like us. All right, we'll see, we'll see you <laughs> next crazy. time on the green room. <laughs> Bye.